Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be working on this double V split tumbler using a template from the Crafty Veteran. So we're going to start out by prepping our base with black, gray, and white. Spray painting it, letting it dry, and then using the epoxy method to apply our glitters. You can use Mod Podge if you'd like or glitter glue instead of Mod Podge. Um, but I will tell you using chunkier glitters, it does give you better full coverage and it helps to keep the glitters from poking up. So epoxy tends to um, lay glitters more flat than glitter glue application does. So I would definitely recommend that. And first we're gonna go in with caviar. This is from Peachy Olive Glitters. We're gonna apply that to the bottom and then tip the cup at about a 45 degree angle to let it cascade down into the darker gray section um, just to get a good fade so we can prepare ourselves to lay down that gray color. Next, we're going in with Jedi and I'm going to hold my cup at a 90 degree angle and just go around in a circle to kind of get a good roadmap going of where I want the darker gray to go and then I'm going to cascade that down into the black to give it a good fade and then tip it back at a 9 I'm sorry not a 90 another 45 degree angle to fade it up into where the silver section is going to be and as you're going up the cup towards the lighter colors you want to make sure that your um, color or your glitter is going to be less concentrated in those areas if you're filling that up um, too concentrated, it's not going to leave any epoxy open for the silver color to adhere to the cup. So just make sure you're not going too heavy handed. And then next we're gonna go in with coronation. This is basically a chunky silver holographic. Um, we're gonna do the same thing, lay that down in the section of the silver, fade it down into Jedi, and then back up into the white sections. Once I have a pretty decent um, ombre. I am going to go in with Guy Diamond and that is going to fill in any spaces in the coronation section just to ensure that we're getting full coverage because it is a chunkier glitter. And then once I've got a good fade on that, we're gonna go in with Bougie for the white and that is going to give us the last color that we're gonna use, fading it up into the top of the cup and then fading it again back down into coronation and guy diamond in that silver section to give it a perfect ombre. Once that epoxy was fully cured, I sprayed it with Krylon Triple Thick Spray three separate times to ensure that the glitter wasn't going to move into the sections that I did not want it to migrate into. And then I put two coats of Flint Sisters Regular Setting Epoxy on the cup. And then next I'm going in with a sanding block just to buff down any pokey pieces of glitter that are sticking up, making sure that the top and bottom rims are completely smooth and then we're gonna take the Dremel as well once we've got the surface of the cup sanded down and we're going to Dremel around the rim to ensure that there is just a very fine line of stainless steel exposed for the final coats of epoxy to adhere to and then once all of that rim is completely sanded everything's buffed down we're gonna take 91% rubbing alcohol Wipe that off with paper towel or microfiber towel just to make sure that all of that epoxy dust is removed off of there before going in with any vinyl and um, further coats of epoxy. And once that's completely cleaned off, we're gonna go in with our vinyl section. I got this adorable golden retriever wiener dog ghosty Halloween vinyl from TumblrCon at the 311 Co. booth from my friend Wendy. And I thought it would be perfect for this because I'm basically going to use this year round if I decide to keep this because we all know that I'm obsessed with my golden retriever. So <laughs> um, I'm just going to take the vinyl. This is opaque. This is not semi-transparent or transparent, so it's not going to show the glitter underneath. But I'm going to take this. Uh, it's called the Deep V template I believe. I have it linked in the description for you guys from the Crafty Veteran and I'm going to take that and I'm going to center it where I want the vinyl um, to be cut and I will tell you guys this did move on me. It does come with little grippies to 
put on the template and this was the first time I've used it and I learned that I probably should have put those little rubber grips on there. Um, it was totally salvageable. It didn't really make much of a difference, but it did slide around. So definitely would recommend that. And also a brand new sharp X-Acto knife or you are probably gonna need to score this twice um, if you don't have a super sharp X-Acto. So we're gonna cut that out in two sections so same size same everything and then i'm going to go in with my striping assistant tool from the amy's make everything and i'm just basically scoring the top and the bottom of my tumbler to get a straight line um, where i want the base of the v-split to sit and then where i want the top of the v-split to sit i wanted to make sure that they were equally spaced from both the top and the bottom of the cup and then also that they were spaced um, centered I guess I would say like the distance between the two splits were the same on the surface of the cup so once I determined the top and bottom where I wanted that straight line to lay um, I'm gonna tape that down and then I'm gonna take my this is two inch painters tape and I basically just butt it right up against that angle of that V-split and then I'm going to do that on both sides of the first piece that I'm laying down. And then once I find the center point, I'm going to tape down the second V-split so there's equal spacing between those two um, pieces of vinyl. We want to make sure those are centered um, and then we're going to put the decal in the middle so we're going to tape those and then use the hinge method to apply it. Now I will tell you guys, this was a little bit tricky to apply using the hinge method, but it was basically the only method that would work to ensure that it was anchored in place and we could keep the even spacing between the two splits. So I basically had to anchor the top and the bottom. And then you'll see once I get this all in place that I'm just gonna do some finagling and remove some tape and move some things around. Um, but basically get it into place and then I'm going to take the tape off that I used as a spacer to get that out of the way and then we're going to remove the tape at the bottom here and cut away the backing like we normally do using the hinge method so I exposed probably about an inch of um, the adhesive from this vinyl taking that backing off and then we're going to use that base as an anchor to ensure that it doesn't move once we get it in place. Um, and then once I've got that anchored down, I'm going to remove the tape from the rest of the cup, but we're basically going to have to apply it instead of going like in the center um and applying it from bottom to top or top to bottom we're gonna have to work it from left to right if that makes sense so just so it didn't get any wrinkles or anything like that you'll see me here i'm pulling the one side up and then once i've got that backing pulled up so it doesn't crinkle i'm just putting my thumb um, with firm pressure pressing it towards the top of that tip and then we're gonna go and push down the sides so if that makes sense or not, <laughs> hopefully seeing it visually helps you guys. Um, but just be careful because this does wrinkle really easily using this type of an odd shape um, using the hinge method. Repeating the same method here, we are going to remove about an inch of the backing, pull that tape so we have the anchor down at this point, and then I'm going to push my thumb down towards the center point of the cup. And then once we've got that tip fully laid down, we're gonna go back in through on the side and lay that down, basically working from the center outward to ensure that there's no wrinkling, no bubbles. I had one bubble that I had to pop here that you're seeing, and that was it. So as long as you're patient with it, taking your time, um, not rushing things, you should be able to get a pretty solid application of this vinyl. And then I'm gonna take this orange holographic from Te Tech Wrap Craft, and FYI, Tech Wrap asked me to be a brand ambassador or an affiliate for them, so I will have a discount code 
coming for you guys soon here. Um, but I am going to lay that orange down at, I cut it out at 0 0.08 inches by 11 and a half. And then I took black, just plain flat black vinyl. I cut that out at 0 0.05 by 11 and a half inches. And I'm going to lay that right over top of the orange. And at this point, we are laying it directly over top of this printed vinyl. There is not a coat of epoxy between the two. When I laid the vinyl striping down, Holographic is notorious for showing any lumps and bumps underneath it. So I would recommend if you're not doing a coat of vinyl between the two that you are putting it, basically butting it right up against the printed vinyl, not fully overlapping it because it's going to show that little lip there um, where it is going over top of the printed vinyl. Um, if you're doing a coat of epoxy, you don't have to worry about that. You can just lay it wherever on the printed vinyl, but just a forewarning. And then we're going to lay down the sides and then the base. And when I'm ready to cut the excess vinyl off of the um, vinyl striping, I'm going to show you guys a trick to get the perfect angle, perfect triangle. Um, here in just a moment and I will tell you guys when that's coming up Okay, so my trick to getting the absolute perfect score on an angle I'm taking the X-Acto knife and I'm going to slice it directly center where the two pieces of vinyl are overlapping, if that makes sense. You'll see it here again, where you see the very like 90 degree angle of the inner portion of that vinyl where it's crisscrossing and then like the 90 degree on the outer portion. I don't know if 90 degrees is the right term, but basically where they intersect, you want to cut it straight through so it creates the perfect V. And you'll see here that it's scored perfectly. I use that trick every time and every one of my V splits or anything that I'm doing vinyl striping on always comes out perfectly. So definitely would recommend doing that. Next, I created this SVG and I used the font from Creative Fabrica called Spooky Halloween. It says tricks for treats. And then I found a little bone from Creative Fabrica as well. And I used that same font, just lessened the font size. And then I sliced the word for out of the bone so it would peek through um, as the orange in the bone from the base. The offset is at 0 0.053 and then it's about six inches in width and then I'm just again gonna use my tape at the top and the bottom I hate measuring things <laughs> with a passion so I'm gonna use my one inch painters tape just to kind of get a good um, kind of rough draft where I want it placed to make sure that it's going to be centered and angled both on the top and the bottom evenly and then once I've got that in place, I'm going to use the hinge method once again, removing the backing from that vinyl. And then I'm just going to pull up the rest of it all at once. And I'm going to use my finger again just to press all of that SVG down all at one time. Once all of the vinyl work was laid down, I put this on my turner with a coat of polycrylic just to ensure that none of the vinyl was going to lift under the epoxy. And then after about 30 minutes of letting it air dry, I went in with one final coat of Flynn Sisters regular setting epoxy that cured overnight and it was dry by the next morning. And this cup was finished. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell button if you want to get notified of future tutorials. And I will see you guys next weekend.